You're listening to Tal Radio powered by Touch a Life Foundation and this is Foodology. I am radio host Devansh and on this show I talk about the enormous world of a little word called food. Floral centerpieces can make a huge statement when you decorate your countertops, shelves and tables in your homes. But sometimes these flowers can show up on your dinner plate too. Edible flowers. They have been used in culinary dishes for centuries, including the cultures of ancient Rome, China, the Middle East, and India. Not all flowers are safe to eat, but those that are can offer a unique burst of flavor and color to many dishes, including salads, sauces, beverages, entrees, etc. Some of them may even offer health benefits. Beauty and fragrance have always affected the human senses. Flowers draw us with their color and scent. Across the world, flowers signify many things. In some cultures, they represent abundance, in others, purity, divinity, wealth, fertility, and even knowledge. Edible flowers not only allow you to add color and beauty to your dishes. They also contain nutrients like vitamin C, vitamin A, vitamin K. Research is being conducted to investigate the antioxidant and anti-inflammatory properties of edible flowers. Flowers have been included in food as far back as we have records. Ancient Greek, Romans, and Chinese herbalists recorded medicinal and culinary uses of flowers. The early Incas, Aztecs and Hindus included flowers in most of their important rituals. Nearly every civilization recognized calendula whose petals were served as food and piled on altars. There's also information available of the use of edible flowers from the medieval and Victorian periods. Historically, flower petals were eaten most often fresh in salads or as garnishes. The petals of carnation, bee balm, sage, violet, calendula were most commonly eaten. They were thought to be cleansing for the body as well as attractive. It was a common practice for the ancient people to dry the petals and include them in tea blends. Popular tea flavors were hibiscus, rose, jasmine, and bee balm. Did you know that bee balm was used as a tea substitute when black tea became unavailable during the Boston Tea Party in 1773? To preserve violets, medieval monks would make a sweet syrup from the petals. The Victorians, who associated edible flowers with elegance, candied the flowers of violet to decorate their cakes and desserts. Even today, rose water and orange flower water are used daily in many Middle Eastern and South Asian homes. Everywhere you look, flowers begin to come into view. Saffron from crocuses, lavender, steamed banana leaf rolls, and even hops, which are so crucial to beer. This reflects ancient history, one we can become a part of simply by sitting down to dinner. The concept of edible flowers have always fascinated me. Isn't it great that you can use roses from decorating the bouquet for a loved one to preparing a dessert or a refreshing coolant? Today, I will be talking all about the world of edible flowers. Roses are among the most ancient of flowers and are the most popular. Fossil records indicate that they have been on earth for more than 40 million years, predating humans. Native only to the northern hemisphere, roses can also grow in the south of the equator. The Greek poet Sappho titled this flower as the queen of flowers. It is America's favorite flower and has more than 200 species in its family, 
which comes in a range of sizes, colors, and is of course edible. In fact, roses have plenty of nutritional value, containing vitamin A, vitamin C, niacin, potassium, iron, calcium, and phosphorus. As long as your rose plant has not been sprayed with pesticides or chemicals, it is totally safe to consume it. Including the leaf, bud, petal, and hip of the rose, all of these parts are edible and can be used in many recipes. Depending on the variety of rose plants, flavors range from fruit like strawberries to green apples to herb like minty and spicy undertones. The more fragrant the flower, the more flavor it offers. Roses have been used in dishes such as soups, salads, candies, condiments, and rose petals are, of course, delicious in desserts, jellies, syrups, butters, and teas. Rose hips have been used in jams, wines, teas, sauces, and soups. In fact, the rose buds can be mixed in honey or teas. Did you know that rose leaves are often used to make a tea which is similar to black tea? A simple Google search would result in thousands of rose recipes. Rose teas, jams, cakes, ice creams, alcohol, and even rose chicken. This flower is so versatile that it can not only be used as a decor or garnish, but can also flavor many sweet and savory dishes. Next comes the lavender. It is also categorized as an herb. Many people are skeptical if lavender is edible or not. So let me tell you, virtually all types of lavender are edible, but only when used carefully and skillfully, as too much can spoil the entire dish and make it taste bitter and soapy. Culinary lavender is a member of the mint family and is close to rosemary, sage, and thyme. It is best used with fennel, oregano, rosemary, thyme, and sage. English lavender has the sweetest fragrance of all the lavenders and is the one that is most commonly used in cooking. To be honest, the uses of lavender are only limited by your own imagination. Culinary lavender has a sweet floral fragrance with lemon and citrus notes. And the potency of any lavender increases with drying. As an herb, lavender has been in documented use for over 2,500 years. In ancient times, lavender was used for mummification and perfume by the Egyptians. The Greeks and Romans bathed in lavender-scented water. It is very important to understand this flower before using it for cooking. As it might seem like an easy task to use it in your dishes, but it does require a lot of skill and experience. The lavender flowers add a beautiful color to your salads. It can also be substituted for rosemary in many bread recipes. This flower can be put in sugar and sealed tightly for a couple of weeks. Then the sugar can be substituted for ordinary sugar, for a cake, bun, or even custard. You can grind the lavender in a herb or coffee grinder or mash it with mortar and pestle. These flowers look beautiful and taste good too in a glass of champagne, with chocolate cake, or as a garnish for sorbets or ice creams. Lavender also tastes amazing with savory dishes. Chamomile Chamomile is used in everything from cosmetics to aromatherapy to beverages. Calming chamomile has been around for ages, dating back thousands of years. Both Egyptians and ancient Romans used chamomile in tea, creams, incenses, and other beverages. In Egypt, chamomile was prescribed as a cold remedy. In the modern era, nighttime chamomile tea is a staple for inducing sleep. The word chamomile comes from the Greek word chamomelon, which means small apple. 
precisely because this flower smells so similar to an apple. There are two main types of chamomile, German and Roman. German chamomile blossoms are smaller than Roman ones. Most people know chamomile as a tea herb, but did you know that you can eat it like any other culinary herb? Well, this flower can be included into oatmeal and other cereals. Chamomile blossoms and leaves are enjoyable in salads. The leaves are bitter, so make sure you use them sparingly. Chamomile's sweetness make it well suited for dessert preparations such as ice creams and custards. It can make a great baking ingredient that works in cakes and other pastries. Chamomile's benefits in beverages are not only limited to tea. Its rich apple flavor can work amazingly with alcoholic drinks. Chamomile is used as a flavoring for Spanish sherry and for a certain type of wheat beer. Alternatively, you can also use it to flavor a simple syrup or any sweet drink or even an herbal wine. The possibilities are endless. Dandelions For most people, dandelions are just a nuisance weed that needs to be removed from the lawns between May and August. But there's another side to dandelions and you may want to think twice before chopping them to bits. Dandelions are in fact edible. Nearly the entire plant can be consumed in one way or the another. The only inedible part is the stem. Dandelions have been an important component of traditional Chinese medicine for at least a thousand years. The plants, believed to be native to the Mediterranean, were well known by ancient Greeks, Romans and Egyptians. Medicinally, dandelion roots and leaves were used as a tonic to remove toxins from the bloodstream, acting as a gentle diuretic to improve the functioning of the digestive system. The plants were also appreciated for their beauty. Dandelions were used to make dye, pale yellow from the sunny yellow blossoms and a purplish tint from the inner ribs of the leaves. Even today, many gardeners use the plants to make nutritious tea and wonderful wine. Dandelion flowers are a great addition to pancakes and fritters. Their leaves can be used fresh in salads or chopped and used in place of chives on top of mashed or baked potatoes. Pansy Pansy actually comes from the French word pensée, meaning remembrance or thought. Thus, when a bouquet of pansies is given to you, it means that the person is thinking of you. When eaten raw, pansy flowers have a fresh, slightly spicy, lettuce-like flavor. To describe their taste in one word, I would say that they taste very green. They are popular in salads because their taste meshes very well and they add a great splash of color. Really, they work very well as a garnish for any savory meal and since they come in so many colors, these are the perfect addition to any recipe. They are also excellent dessert flowers. They can be pressed fresh into the icing of a cake or placed into a bowl of fruit. Candying is the procedure that most common chefs do. However, both because it helps to preserve the flowers for longer and because it gives them a sweeter, more dessert-like taste. People also bake pansy in cookies. The next flower I want to talk about is honeysuckle. There are over 180 varieties of honeysuckle, which include both the deciduous and evergreen types. All the varieties of honeysuckle are sweet smelling flowers that range from white to yellow to red. Honeysuckle is the symbol of love. In the language of flower, it stands for the bond of love. The fragrance is supposed to induce dreams of passion. The ancient Chinese used honeysuckle for snake bites. Physicians in Middle Ages in Europe found that honeysuckle was antibacterial and anti-inflammatory. Honeysuckle stems have been eaten since the Middle Ages for arthritis and hepatitis. 
Although the flowers are edible, the berries can sometimes be poisonous. The stems and vines may also be poisonous in some varieties of honeysuckle. The Japanese honeysuckle is edible and contains calcium, magnesium and potassium. Children learned long time ago to remove a flower from the vine and pull the stem at the small end. The whole inside part of the flower will come out from the petals. Then they would suck on the long skinny tubes which tasted sweet, almost like honey. In the past, honeysuckle wines were often boiled and eaten like a vegetable. And the flowers were boiled into syrups or placed in puddings. There are a lot of ways in which you can use honeysuckle in your day-to-day -day life. Like brewing them into some tea or a delicious wine. You can also make them into honeysuckle jelly or bake them into your favorite cakes and cookies. You can also use honeysuckle and fresh mint together in a vinaigrette dressing for basically any salad. Hibiscus Most likely hibiscus is native to West Africa and it is grown all around the world, especially South and Southeast Asia. The hibiscus may not be originally from China but this is where the earliest and the most extensive cultivation of the various species of this flower began. Europeans picked up hibiscus plants when exploring China centuries ago and introduced them back at home. Traditionally, these flowers had many uses, such as in medicine, food, drinks and beauty rituals. Even today, the most popular use of hibiscus is in the form of tea. When incorporated with simple syrup or any sweetener, hibiscus finds its way into many sweet treats such as jams, jellies, ice creams, tarts, chocolate puddings, cakes. Not just that, it also complements savory foods like chutneys, marmalades, butters, sauces and even pickles. In Sudan, it is often cooked with onions and ground nuts. Hibiscus makes a wonderfully tart and citrusy addition to any summer salad and they have been used in traditional and herbal medicine for centuries. They are a fantastic source of vitamin C, which is a key vitamin that helps support a healthy immune system. Jasmine Jasmine flowers are small, delicate white and have a very intense aroma. Because their flavor is sweet and floral, they are also quite bitter and they are best used as a food safe garnish. Well, we kind of already know that jasmine is edible, of course, because that's how we get the jasmine flavored tea. But it is important to make sure that you are getting the right jasmine. Only the species Jasminum sambac and Officinal are edible, the rest all can be poisonous. It is widely believed among botanists that the jasmine flower originated in Persia. Now call it on. It is said to have been brought across the Red Sea into Egypt in early 1000 BC and was later brought to Turkey and Greece. In Hawaii, Jasminum sambac with its clustered white flowers is called pikake. In aromatherapy, Jasmine is used for its relaxing qualities as an essential oil or in scented candles and incense. The beauty and the fragrance industry heavily uses jasmine. Culinary experts use jasmine as a garnish and in delectable pastries. Jasmine spice, which adds a strong floral fragrance and flavor to food and beverages, is simply blossoms taken from the jasmine plant which range from white to light pink in color and these are dried. The jasmine spice is perhaps the best known use of jasmine. Commonly used in tea blends, cookies, cupcakes, scones, syrups, dressing and many other foods. The infusion of jasmine spice in dishes is simply tantalizing. For all their history, 
edible flowers have been a bright spot on the culinary landscape, available to everyone from peasants to kings. Reclaiming this tradition takes nothing more than a pot or a patch of land, some care and attention, and a desire to bring beauty and flavor into your life, and obviously your kitchens. This is radio host Devanj signing off. Hope you have a beautiful and a magical day ahead.